What's up guys, Chris here with another Eden Zero manga chapter review, and I gotta say, this chapter had a few surprises for me, and all the good kinds. It had one of the best things I like about Toast Time Skip chapters, in which it really does show how far the crew have come in just the sheer volume of their deeds. As we only saw a shaky battle against the mindless drones in the first Time Skip chapter, and we basically just had downtime with just discussions and setup over the last two, but now we're truly getting into uh, seeing everyone in action post time skip so this is something that i really like and we also got a nice little surprise at the end of the chapter so let's look forward to that before we get into this chapter don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos it really does help and also don't forget to support me on coffee and patreon if you guys want to see more in-depth videos done in a much more i'm just gonna say neater format then please help support me on there and also don't forget to follow me on instagram and twitter at the group weeb there will be in the description below if you want to see what i post on a somewhat regular basis as well as an extra way to be updated on when I upload. Also, if your notification feeds do not work. But with all that said and done, let's get straight into chapter 174. Mind getting out of the way? And this comes into to mind at the very end of the chapter. Also, I am not showing the title page as that uh, that is not something I should show on YouTube. I really feel like Mashima is just going to full on horny with the last couple of chapters with certain scenes and images. But anyway, we cut to the outside of the Blue Garden Adventurers Guild as we see civilians reacting to the Union Army showing up, speculating that some big shot villain must be in there. And we see that Feather is, once again, leading this army. We cut back to the inside of the guild hall as no one's questioning about that they're going to be fighting Feather straight on. That she has the same abilities that he does to see other people's locations, and in battle she can use it to predict her enemy's movements. And I like how Jin just straight up asks if Noah's going to help them escape, but he says that in his position, he can't do that. Y says that he just tells him to shut up, but Noah says that the very least he could do is buy them a little bit of time. Time, but Shiki thanks him, stating that they got this. It's a thought that counts. They'll just make a mad dash for the ship. As everyone's waving goodbyes to the captain and Noah, they begin out to head outside to meet the Union Army head on. Feather pronounces them to fire straight on them, despite there being civilians inside, but she just straight up says, the bullets won't hit anyone. I can see it. Everyone open fires, and I like how Shiki just straight up redirects the trajectory of their bullets, and I like that, and I think from what I'm seeing, these are ether bullets anyway, but anyway, Shiki redirects their bullets but as they do this feather uses something called etherlink so this is something new from what i can tell I, if i'm wrong leave it down below but w i believe what she's doing is that she's temporarily sharing her power with her group essentially giving them access to her ether gear temporarily which is honestly something really cool and i wonder if anyone else can do it or if it's something very particular for feather to do because temporarily giving someone access to your ether gear abilities is something i didn't even consider and again if everyone could do it this, imagine the different combinations of ether gear abilities you could have if you give an ether gear user the ability to temporarily use a different ether gear if they're linked with someone. But anyway, everyone begins to attack on Feather's command, but it seems the Rutherford siblings just begin to just use their wind to knock their opponents out of the way. Laguna also just brushes them aside with, with his ether gear. Omra slashes through them with her katanas, and Rebecca uses her happy blasters to hit all these guys. We then get perspective from some of the other soldiers that are fighting wise and they're like i can see your movements but wise all of a sudden uses either gear and creates a metal arm knocking the guy back just stating did you say something and shiki just pins everyone else to the ground with his ether gear as always and i like how they're how they're being like this whole team is being taken out connor is looking on in honestly kind of sh confusion and shock as he states that even though he heard he heard what they did by saving the planets of shiki that uh, ziggy invaded he knew he knew that that would make them uncommonly strong but he had no idea that they'd be this strong such young kids and they're fighting all the time and i like how Noah just brings up the fact that it's because they're young they see fewer options for solving problems and that makes them more sensitive and more straightforward and as noah continues to explain this we see images of the crew battling their way through their enemy as he states that they fight because it's their choice to protect their family to prevent the loss of any more family connor brings up family and well noah brings up the fact that everyone on the eden zero is an orphan they've lost their families and and everyone on their ship is their family. And they don't want those bonds to disappear or be destroyed. That's why they're fighting. We then get a, more of a glimpse of some more, more Eden Zero crew action as Pino disables a bunch of people's enemies with their EMP. And Happy uses his solo mode. So now he has a cannon on his back. A little gun cannon on his back. So now he can fight on his own when he's separated from Rebecca. Which I find very cool because he used to do that. But he was still only turned into his twin pistols. Thus making him... Making it 
nearly impossible for him to aim his own blasters, which is which was honestly a little nice fix with this new solo mode cannon. But then Rebecca begins to charge towards the enemy, and we see the ether markings move up her body as she then kicks away all of the enemies, revealing her overdrive. Now, here's something that I said previously, and I'm not going to show up the clip right now, but I stated that I don't think Rebecca was going to unlock overdrive in this three years, as I feel like with how Cat Leaper works, it would be too overpowered if she fully mastered it and achieved overdrive, seemingly the limit, the true limits of her ability. But now we got this honest, nice, honestly nice surprise, and I like it. The fact that she hasn't used Cat Leaper full extent means that she's not willing to alter the world unless absolutely necessary, and they haven't gotten into a point like that yet. And now that she has unlocked overdrive, it seems that she is incredibly fast, durable, and can really land a hit. And I like how the opponents just do a whole monster cat uh, gag or something like that. But yeah, a nice little bit of comedy as we get this nice epic moment with Rebecca unlocking her overdrive. And I really like the design, obviously, with ability like Cat Leaper, she's going to have a cat-like appearance. Her hair is so long. She basically has a somewhat like athletic, uh, how do I put this, more of like a gymnast type uh, outfit from what I can tell. And I like the how the ether markings are through her legs, her arms, and the cat whiskers that are made out of her ether markings. At first, I was considering that this was kind of like a pseudo overdrive, but then again, this is a full overdrive flat out, and I love it. I really like the design. It fits her overdrive ability and her personality all too well. And, but yeah, back to the chapter. Everyone's wondering how they're able to evade their ca being captured as this whole unit is using Feather's ability and they can see their movements. But Homura actually ends up bringing up a very interesting point. They can see their movements, but they can't handle them. As well, the fact that they're most likely not fast enough to react in time, as per Wise and everyone else, is incredibly fast and quick to, to action, as Homura just knocks out everyone else. But just as everyone is panicking and Feather was about to say that she's going to resort to using something, she gets cut off as she can just appears flat out right in her face asking her sorry would you mind move getting out of the way and she is just utterly shocked he's not in the location that she that she saw him in and there's never been a large discrepancy like this before as she just pats her on the shoulder and says see you later much to her shock and i like the little interaction afterwards with wise is like why would you say see you later and she's like all right i don't ever want to see her again i mean i like this little bit of extra comedy but as feather is about to turn around to get them to stop she stumbles and realizes that she's stuck Shiki, at that moment, subtly uh, pinned her to the ground, getting her stuck in the ground. So that is something very subtle. I didn't even notice him doing it. And that's something really great that Shiki managed to use his gravity ether gear to such a, an extent that he's able to pin someone to the ground without them even noticing. That is something very impressive. So, yeah. As she's looking with all of them just heading straight for the ship, she states that she won't let them get away and that her entire fleet has surrounded their ship and they won't be able to leave the planet. We then cut to the inside of the Eden Zero as they're preparing for an emergency takeoff as well yeah they're surrounded and it'd be impossible to force their way through unless they're willing to sink a few ships and I like how Sister also brings up that these are Razor class ships the fastest in the Union Army as Hermit deduces that they won't be able to outrun the, the Union's fastest fleet without anyone hurt she's questioning if they will be able to do that as remember the Union isn't their enemy right isn't really their enemy it's Ziggy even though they'll be in conflict they don't really want to fight the Union Army but just as Hermit says this Connor pops in states it's possible for him much to everyone's shock and i like how pino is just super glad to see the man he's like call me captain if you please let's begin the mission to escape the union army's clutches so just like that ending the chapter connor makes his grand reappearance on the eden zero asking to be the captain of the ship to help steer the ship now this ends the chapter but let me just bring up something very interesting now yes connor can be a bit of a buffoon and do stupid stuff but in the first universe that we were in connor was a a very gifted ship captain. Even in Universe 2, where he was partnered with Ziggy, he was talented enough for Ziggy to allow a human on the crew to pilot the Edens 1. But here in Universe 3, he was stuck in a very different position. But he's still a capable captain. Because remember, they managed to get uh, the, the Eden Zero to Sun Jewel through a very dangerous asteroid field within a few days without anybody noticing. Which means Connor can get them out of this very sticky situation. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do. And maybe Mashmo will make some really cool battleship type 
spreads because I honestly don't think we're able to capture the scale in a single page. So I kind of pray for Mashima on that part because he I you think he's seeing like volume like 17 or 16 in an afterward that it's very hard for him to draw these type of space battles and why it's not done in manga that often. So I kind of hope he manages to avoid doing anything too crazy for his own sake. I mean, I'd like to see it, but I don't want the guy to overdo it. But yeah, that's the chapter. Not only did we get a nice little bit of everyone's growth as they managed to not only overpower an entire arm uh, platoon of Union soldiers, they managed to get away from one of the members of the Irrational Sace Interstellar who could see the their own positions and where they'd be, as well as, well, basically making her utterly useless in that whole fight and being too fast or too strong for any of these members to take them down even knowing what they were about to do next. And Shiki managed to, to just be somewhere completely different than where she saw, so it's very possible that Shiki's gravity can basically alter future perception or something like that, depending on how he uses it, meaning that you can't fully comprehend gravity or something like that. It's a complicated thing, I don't know how I'm going to be able to explain that. But another good thing, aside from the growth of the series, and Connor rejoining the crew seemingly, is that Rebecca unlocked her overdrive. I kind of gushed over it a bit earlier in the review a couple minutes ago, but I'm really happy now. I wasn't expecting Rebecca to get her overdrive in such a, you know, not so grandiose reveal in a fight, in a solo fight against someone. I thought that was going to be the whole thing with her getting her overdrive. But this is nice too. We Now we know that every human on the Eden Zero, save for Laguna now, has unlocked their overdrive. So I feel like in the next big battle, I think we're going to see Laguna's overdrive, and I wonder how that's going to look. But Rebecca's overdrive, like I said, it complements her design, it shows her personality as well, and it makes sense with how her ether gear is called. Cat Leaper that she'd have a cat-like appearance with the cat ears and the cat tail, etc. And with the, her, with how her outfit is, it emphasizes her legs, since that's her main weapon, and also emphasizes that she is incredibly quick on her feet. I also wonder how well her ether gear control has gotten with Cat Leaper, now that she can use her overdrive, and what she could potentially do with it. But yeah, this is honestly a really great chapter for Eden Zero and I can't wait to see what happens next because now we're going to see a vast get a big getaway from Feather and her army and potentially we'll get to that big confrontation with Ziggy and that team up with Elsie or something will happen where the Eden Zero will have to fight some other enemy and Elsie might have to fight Ziggy all on her own and we might have this big moment where Elsie's crew is completely annihilated by Ziggy leaving only her standing and maybe she'll join the Eden Zero crew after that that'd be pretty cool but yeah with all that said and done don't forget to leave your thoughts opinions and theories down in the comments down below on what you think could happen next your thoughts on this chapter your thoughts on rebecca's overdrive being revealed in this manner and how it looks etc and speculations on how it could go from there also don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell with updates on future videos it really really does help and i can't wait to keep making more Eden zero content for you guys and with all that said and done i hope you all have an awesome day